Hi neighbors, I'm Dr. Brent Ridge. And I'm Josh Kimmer Purcell. And we're the founders of the beauty company Beekman 1802. And Good Housekeeping asks us to give you guys a sneak peek at some of the renovations we just finished at our farmhouse. This is our kitchen. And like most people, we spend 99% of our time when we're home in the kitchen. Now the house was built in 1802. Originally it wouldn't have even had a kitchen. The kitchen would have been in a separate building to reduce the fire hazard. But what we do have in this room that was always here is the fireplace. So we designed our entire kitchen design around the fireplace. One of the things we did was to try to tie back to the historical aspect of the house was we put in a reclaimed barnwood floor. But the rest of the kitchen we really wanted to keep really modern. So we have light colors. We use uh, Cambria surfaces because they're completely indestructible um, and they're made in the USA. And then one thing we did, which we really loved, was we painted the lower cabinets a slightly darker color than the upper cabinets. So it gives this illusion of extra height in the kitchen. One thing to remember when you're renovating, if you're trying to save money uh, and maybe you're choosing prefab um, cabinets and things, one of the ways you can actually really up the premiumness of them is to buy amazing hardware. So we chose this solid brass hardware um, to really give it that, that luxury look. We created this appliance garage. So all of our appliances are right here and there's electricity in it. So you can just pull out the appliance, slide it out and use it and put it right back away. Another fun little tip we did was we wanted everything to be really accessible when we're entertaining. So we used our trays and platters as art actually. And so you can just grab it off the wall and use it when you need it. Probably the most important lesson we learned uh, through this kitchen renovation was that we're only going to renovate once. It is so much work, it is so much expense. So we said we're just going to get everything we wanted. And one of the biggest splurge we made that was so worth it is our coffee station. Anytime, day or night, 24 hours a day, cappuccino, espresso, latte, coffee at the touch of a button. So now we're in the two rooms where we spend all of our leisure time. This is our library and living room combined. Now these rooms are, have a great historic character, so we really tried to decorate in a way that was really respectful of the past, but would still let us you know, live with all the modern comforts that we, that we love. This is our library room, and you can see we have our like, super warm, cozy leather couch in front of one of the fireplaces. And there's a lot of architectural detail in these rooms. And one of the little tricks that we did was we painted architectural details a little slightly darker shade than the rest of the trim, so they really pop out. In 1802, that was a time when travel was really opening up in the world. And William Beekman, who built this house, he would have had all these amazing things from all over the world, from the trade routes and the spice routes, he would have collected them. So what we did in this room is we actually bring back all of our souvenirs when we travel and we put them in this room. So there's things from India, from Africa, from Iceland, from all around the US, just little curiosities that we love to look at every day. So if we move from the library, into the living room. This is where we hang out and watch TV and where we sit with guests most of the time. One of the things we didn't want to do in such a historic house was turn it into a museum. So we made really um, sure to have both pieces that sort of had a nod to the history, but then have a super contemporary bent. This is actually an antique mirror. It's, it's not very valuable or anything, but we painted it in a really bright color to give it a modern pop in the room. And then because you know, we like to watch TV as much as anybody. We made sure that we had our TV here that blends in, but then it also pulls out. And when we have guests, we can all sit and watch movies together. All right, come on into the master bedroom. Probably uh, the second most important room of the house after the kitchen. You know, one of the great things about the architecture of this house is that the bedrooms were really large um, and had pretty high ceilings, and so we just got to play around with that. We're very fortunate that all of the flooring in the house was original. Now, back when the house was built in 1802, they would have painted the floors. So in this room, there were layers and layers and layers of paint. And so what we did was just stripped everything back and put a very light coating of wax on it, which actually gives the floor uh, a really modern look, um, but still keeping all that wonderful 200-year-old patina. 
take a look at this wallpaper because it looks uh, kind of modern and maybe even a little bit garish. Um, but this wallpaper are some of the original colors that would have been used in the year 1802. They loved really bold colors. And this wallpaper was actually hand block printed here in Sharon Springs, New York. There's a fantastic company called Adelphi Paper Hangings and they do these um, antique block printed wallpapers. In here we also um, try to use uh, some very modern furniture because as Josh probably told you, we try to mix uh, modern furniture with the more traditional architectural elements of the house. So we uh, chose Joy Bird to do both the seating area and also the bed in the room. Now I know a lot of you have already, you've been hearing about NFT art um, and the reason everyone's talking about the digital art is because of this. TVs and the digital monitors are getting so thin now that this will be the art of the future. You'll buy your one-of-a-kind art and you'll display it digitally. And when you want to switch it up to something new, you'll switch it up. So when you're thinking of doing a renovation or getting a new TV, think about how you're going to display your art on your TV. Now, one of the things that people love about this room the most are these picture frames. Now, what we did for this particular dis display was once we had the measurements of the frames, and the matting done, we actually painted the frames and the mats the same color as the wall to give it this really modern collage look. All right, do you guys wanna take a look inside the bathroom? So what we did for the master bathroom was we combined two smaller bedrooms in the house. Now, um, if you live in an old house uh, like we do, you'll know that you're always running into things that um, make it difficult to get the things that you want. So in a master bath, you always assume you're gonna want a wonderful bathtub. Well, because of the way the beams run into the supports of the house, um, we could not create enough support to put in a really beautiful tub. So we decided to work with Kohler uh, and come up with the very best shower. This is the shower with all the works. You step inside, you tell it to turn on, you tell it to play the music, you tell the steam to start, uh, and it's like this own little spa right there in your bathroom. If you can't get the bathtub, put all your bells and whistles in the shower. The other thing, if you uh, have the luxury of doing it, is put in a heated floor. So anytime you're putting in a new flooring in your house, always ask if you can put in a heated floor. And it makes such a difference in terms of keeping the bathroom warm without having to run the heat all the time. All right, so I wanted to give you a peek inside of our medicine cabinets. And I promise you, we have not cleaned it up just for the purposes of this tour because no one's got time for that. Um, but look at this great organization tip. So if you have a medicine cabinet with multiple shelves, divide everything up into individual containers. And what's great about these is that we can take these out, put them right in the dishwasher, put the things back in and put them right back on the shelf. That way everything looks nicely organized and everything looks sparkling clean all the time. All right, I'll give you a quick peek inside the closet. Now, we could have made the bathroom space um, a little bit smaller and had a bigger closet, but we took it as an opportunity to really edit down the number of things that we had, um, because it was kind of embarrassing how many clothes and shoes and things that we had just hoarded kind of over the years. And we knew that if we kept the, the closet space nice and confined, that we wouldn't buy more stuff. Um, so this is how we do that. Now, the one other thing that I would say if you have the opportunity to redesign your bathroom is to put your washer and dryer in the bathroom because that's usually where you're taking off all of your clothes. And so that's exactly what we did here. And we also used it as a space where all of our Wi-Fi systems go. So they're out of view um, from anyone who's visiting the house, but also very easily accessible. And then the last thing I would say for anyone who's renovating a really old house, you know, it can be very difficult to put your HVAC system, your heating and air conditioning systems in, particularly if you don't want to run a lot of duct work into the architecture. And so now with the splits, um, this device right here, we can put one in every single room in the house, which means that every single room uh, can control the, its own temperature via remote. Um, and you don't have to put in a lot of extra duct work into the house. So that technology is really, really great if you're renovating an old house.